Well, Brody and I have a very important job today. There's about six acres of beans down in this slough that uh, we could not get corn planted in this spring, so we came back and filled it in with beans. And, well, the, the approach is down this grass road surrounded by corn right now. So this approach, which we normally never use because it's a drop off, is where we're going to have to drive the draper head and the combine down and potentially KW or a semi. Don't think we're going to use a grain cart here. So we're going to vandalize this sign. I'll be the one that goes to jail. Yep, Brody's. And I think this is poison ivy. Is this poison ivy, guys? I see three leaves. Are you allergic to poison ivy? I don't think so. Like you are to work? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to take this sign down. Maybe that sign. Uh, we will put them back up, though. Don't worry. Don't call us in. Well, it's less than ideal conditions out here. This was not land rolled and it is wet. We got almost two tenths of rain overnight and no wind today, just sun. So he's had, I think he has the head tipped back and probably very rigid to keep rocks from going through the combine. Oh look, here's Duggo with KW and that nice reverse light that we installed. That was you, wasn't it? Well, I didn't want to take all the credit, but <laughs> it was me. That was steep. Yeah, I have a, we'll hit the jet powered hey. motor and we'll just jettison out of here. The AC's kind of nice in here. It is. Yeah. Where's that little blue thing? We'll end that oh, life. You're right Stop next to it. Here. My daily dose of Duggo cussing out the deer and coons. There's a coyote down there. Oh my. That thing does go 40 through the grass. What's left of it? Well, they were 14 and a half percent. Perfect. <laughs> Some dockage. <laughs> Some. And we got our massive oh 6.4 acre farm done. It's supposed to be corn, but we had to plant it in the soybeans due to you're wetness. You're spreading non aquatic species. Yeah, I'm talking to my motor guy. Leave me alone. Is she gonna do it? Need the TRX? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Going down that hill right here, that was uh, as scary as I wanted to get. It's horrible. It's so tippy. I thought I was gonna go forward. I was bracing and it wasn't ideal. Nothing's ever ideal when you can't plant a field like it's supposed to be planted though but we got something done today knocked out a time-consuming field so that when hopefully tomorrow the beans might be closer to that 13 percent we'll be able to roll full steam all right we got to close my top hopper closing now that that's closed I hit this button right here that puts me in road mode so then it actually fluctuates the RPMs and saves fuel. 
It's actually quite, quite nice. So, we've deemed the beans to be a tomorrow afternoon start, so everyone that's gone home, we're gonna go check on Roger. He's doing tillage at 4200. We're gonna go make sure no settings have changed, see how it's working since the rain. Never rained too much. Grandma said three tenths. So it is a little more than I thought it did, but. Uh, three tenths in the last two days. Yeah. But it sure made the bean head not slide very nice on the ground. That field wasn't land rolled, never again. I don't care how small the patch is, it needs to be rolled. The stories I could tell about years ago of no land rolling, nobody knew any better. Just sat on the edge of your seat, looking down, waiting for the big muddy streak to come shooting out from underneath the head. Then you looked up, oh yeah, it's pushing. Big pile, big rat pile. Also doesn't cut very nice. Holy cow! We got some moisture back. Surprising what three tenths in two days does. Feel it. Yeah, it's gonna it's stick, stick on, on the boots. Feet. Oh, and it's doing a much better job now that it's got some moisture. It was as hard as a cement highway. Yeah, it was hard to get it to go in the ground. That one year, this has been eight years ago at least. Remember that one year? It? it was so dry. That must have been 2012. I don't know what we were thinking. I think it was 2012, 10 years ago. And chisel plow, we were ripping that thing apart. So that's it, get the rippers. And we ripped it and just turned the fields into just small cubes of like, well, look like so, rocks. They weren't small cubes. They were more like boulders. <laughs> and if they, we, we thought, well, we'll just let it winter. Frost will bust them up. You have to have moisture to have yeah, there was frost no, breaks. There was no busting of the chunks with the frost. So the next spring, I believe we, you had to spread fertilizer. No, we yeah. dug it once. And they did downsize from boulder size things down to bowling ball. <laughs> and then we got lucky and got a little bit of a rain. I don't remember how much. Then we dug it again and it all was fine, but we were really- It was, a, it was not a decision that was the right one. This is, this is beautiful. So the 4200 is what did this, Salford 4200. And this was combined, what, three three days ago? Yeah, three yep. days ago. So trash has got a little rain on it, but that's that's as black as I want to see it. Is the sun in their eyes again? I think the sun was in there. Oh, we apologize. <laughs> but that's, uh, just looking at the ground, I mean, what you don't want is sticks, long sticks on top of the ground. It's sizing it. This is more than acceptable. Plus it's burying it, so this thing is pretty sweet. There's a little bit more residue than the 5200, which is what we've used, what, two years two, in a row now? Two years, yeah. So I know Eric was thinking that his field was not as black as he'd have liked to seen it, but he had a lot better better crop uh, where he's at. Uh, and the stems were very wet and it was dry. Three, Brown. I'd say what, three to six miles this year, yeah, just in distance was a make or break on rainfall. He got a couple of nice rains where we got shorted up here, but. but uh, yeah, of course, Eric's first year he makes it yeah look easy oh that's the way this farming is you know you start out although not uh, 88 was my first year which i droughted out five bushel beans maybe eight but uh eric he got yeah he's got he's it. he's actually farm leader on our farm he's got the high yield and he's letting us it's know about it it's a good thing it. to start out that way but it also hurts twice as bad when you do get a bad year it's just like well this ain't how it's supposed to work but farming are you in a hurry for some reason? Hang on! Spray your ruts! Slow down! Corner in! Throttle! Full speed! So Roger, he's the 
guy that's run all of our tillage for my whole life um, farming. He's always been our tillage guy in the fall. And he pulled the 5200 for two years. And he's he said the 4200, he likes it more. Pulls easier, uh, less setting. So with this machine, we basically have had it set just two different depths, just different ground types. 5200, heavy ground, light ground, you need to change the depth more in soybeans, that is. of you that do tillage. You're really driving her. Oh, it's never been such a rough year out in the field here. The ground's so hard, we're not used to it, and it's like a highway. Crazy now, that some people are gonna see them wheels on the PC equipment are not on the ground all the time. That's how hard it is. And no, we're not trying to go five inches deep. We get it set for about three and a half, but it hits the hard spots and I mean, it's just, it's the conditions that we're given. It's not good. I think it's like a 45 or 47,000 pound machine and it's riding out of the ground in areas. You can see how deep it is by the paint wore off of the culture. <laughs> It looks like it's doing an excellent job. This is kind of a, a field with mixed soil types towards this highway that we're heading to. Very heavy to the north here. And this hill right here, very light. Well, not very light, but good ground. What, I, what we would consider very good ground. Should we go, go show them the colors of the trees over there? Oh my. Maybe that big buck is back. I think we got better things to do. Eric is out here hunting, bow hunting. He's so excited we got off early. He's like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to try to get a deer. He's like addicted to that. I'm glad I don't have that uh, bow hunting on. <laughs> I don't take too much time and the mosquitoes usually are too big, but uh, I've never done it either. So I, I can't bad mouth it too much. Now you guys see all the real dark green bottom foliage, that's buckthorn. Uh, it's in, what is it, an invasive species? I think so. And that's where the uh, soybean aphid winters. So we should cut, pull all them out. <laughs> I'm not much of a tree leaf type of guy, but this here, because it has not frost, frozen hard, or maybe it froze just enough, got a lot of different colors going on for those of you that want to look at stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's just a tree to me <laughs> a tree you'd love to rip down oh these aren't in the way I'm, a, I'm only against the trees that are in the way <laughs> unlike certain public lands where they're just taking all the trees down oh here we go here we go Public land, it's supposed to have trees, not cut them down. That's all I'm saying. Do the research. You won't believe it. Lucky. All right, guys. I think that's going to be the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out the Salford line if you're interested in vertical pillage. We really, do you think? We really enjoy uh, the few tools that we have tested. He's fixing mud puddles. Little Bob. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Haven't done that in a while. Right, Doggo? Absolutely.